Hi guys, today I'm doing a video on the parallelogram of forces and so in order to do that we need to make sure we know what a resultant force is. Now, a resultant force is quite hard to define because there can be lots of forces acting on an object and a resultant force is kind of the combined effect of all those forces. In terms of the definition you'll need to provide, it is a resultant force is a single force that has the effect of all of the forces acting on an object. In terms of maths and the video we're going to look at now, I'm going to show you how you can work out the resultant force when you've been given several different types of questions. Now the issue with the questions isn't actually the maths involved because actually all you need is a protractor, make sure you have one of those, and a ruler and a sharp pencil. Make sure you use a pencil in case you screw up so you can rub it out because if you're using pen you're going to get into quite a mess. And then it's a matter of counting distances, counting the length along your ruler rather than actually using trigonometry to help you solve it. So I promise it's not as hard as it looks. I'm going to show you some examples now. One, figures six and seven show examples where two forces act on an object X. In each case, work out the magnitude and direction of the resultant force on X. Now, don't go straight into drawing a parallelogram of forces because you've learned that and therefore you're determined to use it. Sometimes you won't need to use it and it won't make sense to. Just look at the figure closely to work out what's going on. So you can see that this guy is pulling on a pulley and he's pulling with a force of 350 newtons. But the crucial thing is that pulley is attached to here, which means his force is actually pulling this weight upwards. Now the weight of the box is pulling the box down by 300 newtons. So what's the difference in those two numbers? Well, it's 50 newtons, and obviously that will be up. So your answer is 50 newtons upwards. Then we've got two men pushing a trolley that's quite a heavy weight up a hill and so one of them is pulling it. But you can see from these force arrows that they're both pulling in the same direction. So all you have to do here is add together the individual forces. So that's 300 plus 200, and that's a 500 Newton force up the hill. And that's done. Now I'm going to show you how, when to use the parallelogram of forces. So a force of 3 Newtons and a force of 4 Newtons act on a point. Determine the magnitude and direction of the resultant of these two forces if the angle between their line of action is. And I probably should have mentioned it before, but magnitude is literally just the size of the force, so the calculation that we literally just did. So in order to do this, you will need your ruler, and you'll need to choose a sensible scale. So I'm going to choose one centimetre to represent one newton. It doesn't matter which way around you do this, but I'm going to do my three newtons along here. So that's going to be a three centimetre long line. I'm using a pen, by the way, because obviously I'm not answering an exam paper, so it doesn't actually matter if I screw up here. And then you're using your protractor because you want a perfect 90 degree angle to mark where 90 degrees is, which is here. And now you've got your two points, you want to link that together with a, oh that's annoying, it's not actually as long as I want it to be, but I'm fairly sure I've drawn that nice and accurately. So that's a four centimetre line going upwards. And now we're going to turn it into a parallelogram going to label my forces. So what is a parallelogram? Well it's a shape that has two parallel sides. So obviously parallel to three newtons will be this line. And then parallel to this line we're going to draw four centimetres coming down. Okay, so we've completed our parallelogram, which in this case is just a rectangle. And then in order to find the resultant force, all you have to do is join the corner of that parallelogram to where the forces originated from. We're just going to draw a nice straight line. You must use a ruler for this. And then in terms of working out the magnitude, just measure the length of that line. Yeah, and that's 5. So your resultant force is 5 newtons. And then in terms of working out the direction, you're just going to measure this angle here. And then make sure you're reading the right way. So obviously you're reading, in this case, this way. I think I've done it slightly wonkily, so I'm going to put that as 55 degrees. And that's how I've worked out both the magnitude and direction. Let's do example B. So the same question, a force of 3 newtons and 4 newtons, but this time with a 60 degree angle between them. There's my 3 newton force again. I'm going to use the protractor to draw, make sure you're using it nice and accurately, a line at 60 degrees. And then we're going to join that up again. 
and there's the four newtons. So let's draw the parallelogram. I'm going to use the protractor to help me improve the accuracy this time. So we're drawing the parallel line that runs against that one, so it's going to run in this angle, but I'm just going to use that to centre it. And we can see this is going to form a nice parallel line. And then it should be straightforward enough to just link these and they should be, it should be three centimetres long, which it is. So that's nice. Perfect. And now to work out the resultant force, simply join. Measure the length of this line. There will be error margins, guys, so don't worry too much. So that's 6.2 centimetres, so that's 6.2 newtons. And then measure this angle here to work out the direction. It's 33 degrees. Here's a slightly more tricky question, and it's simply because of the way they've written it rather than the actual maths. A tow rope is attached to a car at 2.0.8 metres apart. The two sections of rope joined to the car are the same length and are at 30 degrees to each other. The pull on each attachment should not exceed 3,000 newtons. Use the parallelogram of forces to determine the maximum tension in the main tow rope. The way you want to start with this is by giving yourself a rough sketch of what's going on. So I do apologise, I can't draw. So there's the end of my car with the light. And I've been told that it's a tow rope which is joining the car at two points, which is 0 0.8 meters apart and then we know that there's two of them and that they join with an angle of 30 degrees so that's the way the resultant force will be acting so now we've got our idea of what's going on and set up we can now start to draw the parallelogram of forces and that's going to be formed from these two lines here the second thing to note is it says that the pull on each attachment should not exceed 3000 newtons so that's talking about here. And if I use 1,000 newtons to be represented by one centimetre, that will mean that we have three centimetre length there, three centimetre length there. So we're ready to go. So I'm going to draw three centimetres, it doesn't matter what angle at the moment, here. That's going to represent my 3,000 newtons. It is good, by the way, to draw a scale, so one centimetre equals 1,000 newtons. Then we're going to use the protractor to measure 30 degrees. And we'll join up those lines, making sure that it's only a 3 centimetre length line. Great. There's the next one. There's 30 degrees. And I'll turn it into a parallelogram. Just make sure that it is parallel, because sometimes it's quite confusing with using protractors, but just make sure the two lines do go in the same direction. So I know that has to be here. Let's draw another three centimetre line. Which means I can just join this up, so I've now got my parallelogram sorted, and good, that's three centimetres long. And then because we're looking for the resultant force, you're just finding the length of this line in here, 